Hey guys, join me today to make a project using Mod Podge to say thank you and share some news about wonderful, wonderful YouTuber who is an incredible lady and is reaching an incredible, incredible milestone. And once she reaches this incredible milestone, she will be doing an incredible giveaway that um, is uh, sponsored by Played and Mod Podge. So keep watching. Hey guys, it's LJ here um, and I am coming on with a bit of a, an exciting video actually. Um, I have a big announcement before I start which is I have somehow managed to reach 200 subscribers which is just phenomenal to me. I don't, I don't, I can't actually comprehend that, it's amazing. Thank you ever, everyone who has subscribed, that is awesome. Um, I didn't do a 100 subscriber giveaway because it was during the last couple of weeks and I thought it wasn't an appropriate video at the time but I am now, I am going to be doing a 200 subscriber giveaway and I am so so excited um, and that video will be out very very shortly. Today's video is for a wonderful friend of mine she is absolutely incredible um, she has done so much to help me she's gone out of her way she's supported me she's given me advice she's been incredible and I've never met the woman she lives in America, so, you know, she's on a completely different continent, but she has been so kind to me. And she has an amazing, an amazing uh, moment coming up, which is just, oh, I can't. She's incredible. And she... Totally, totally deserved to reach this, this huge, huge milestone. So she's going to be doing a giveaway on her channel and she is being sponsored by Mod Podge. And so I thought that I would do a little project with Mod Podge today that I've been meaning to do for a while and tie it into this as a sort of a, not a VR for her, but sort of just like a, a thank you and a well done and a bigging her up kind of video. So we're going to do something with Mod Podge. But I'm going to do something that I've never done before in my life. I got a de-stash. There's a lady I used to work with um, when her mother passed. I um, got a lot, a lot, a lot of her um, craft stuff. So there were stamps, there were dyes, there was paper, there was embossing, but there was all sorts. It was just like, pretty much her entire scrap room. It was amazing. But I got these. And I've never used this before in my life. So we've got some Stampendous. Stampendous? Stampendous. I'm not entirely sure how you pronounce that. How bad is that? Shrinky Dinks. I've never used these before. Um, so I did a little quick search on um, YouTube. Found a couple of videos and discovered that... Because um, I wanted to do this and cover it with resin. Um, and I've discovered that the best way to do that is to use Mod Podge because otherwise the resin tends to separate from the shrinky ink. So we're going to have a go at this. I've never used these before. So you are going to see me... Yeah, you're going to see me doing some interesting bits and pieces. So let's get started. Okie dokie. So... What I have been told is there is a smooth side and a rough side and you want to do your outline on the smooth side and any colouring on the rough side. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut this down and I'm going to do some stamping with my archival permanent and then I'm going to do some a handwritten one with my um, permanent water and fade proof permanent pigment ink unipin um, fine liner but I also want to test whether the matte mod podge or the gloss mod podge is better so we're going to do two of each so I'm going to cut this in four okay so I've cut my um, shrinky dinks plastic into four the reason I've done four is I want to do two tests I want to test the difference between a drawn image, so with this pen, and a stamped image. And I also want to test the difference between the matte Mod Podge and the gloss Mod Podge. So 
in order to do that fairly, I need two hand-drawn images and two stamped images so that I can have a gloss stamped and hand-drawn and a matte stamped and hand-drawn. So that's my plan. You've just watched me really awkwardly draw an awful butterfly. I am not good at drawing. This is why for my second one I decided to wimp out um, <laughs> and do a little, uh, a little bubble writing and a cat face because that was a lot easier. Then for my stamps, I had this stamp set that I got with a magazine a while ago, which has just got some beautiful images on it. So I've chosen the um, Music Note, Trouble Clef, and the sh Dance Shoes, which are just my favourite image from that sheet. It's absolutely stunning. So I'm going to stamp those in using my Mini Misty. Just add on the ink. I should have stopped here, but I added too much ink. Um and it didn't cope so well with the shiny surface. It took a long time to dry and it did smudge a little bit on the music note, but you know, you live and you learn. As I said, it was my first time doing it, so I'm not that worried. So I'm gonna pop those away and then we're going to color on the back of each of these images using Sharpies. So I've got a few fine tip ones there and then I've just got my normal ones that are in my um, pen pot. So I'm just gonna, on the rough side, so the back, I'm going to do the colouring. I don't actually know why you're supposed to do the outline on the shiny and the colouring on the matte, uh, on the rough. If anyone knows, please tell me, because I'm intrigued as to why it works better that way. Um, I'm assuming it's depth, so that you've got the one at the front and the one at the back when they're smaller. I genuinely don't know. If you know, please let me know, because I'm fascinated. So I'm just going to colour these in. Very, very rough colouring. I'm not doing any shading or anything um, really impressive with it. I'm literally just going through and adding some colour to each of the little bits of... Oh, I cringe looking at that butterfly. I am definitely not an artist. What I should have done was had an image underneath that I could have drawn over. That would have been quite sensible. Note to self for next time, that's what we'll do. So I just added in a variety of different colours on the butterfly's wings. I coloured in the eye and the heart for the eye heart cats. Then on the music note, I'm just going to do the flowers and then I'm going to do the flowers and the shoes on the shoes. So while I am doing this and you're watching my colouring, I apologise for the glare. Um, I'm going to just quickly comment on this incredible giveaway that I spoke about. So Janie, when she reaches her 1 million views, which is just phenomenal, um, is going to be offering a prize gift package from Plague and Mod Podge worth a hundred dollars i mean that is just an incredible prize package that's yeah incredible so what's going to happen as soon as she reaches that milestone she will be um, announcing the giveaway on her channel so i will link it down below um please go over and subscribe to her if you're not already um let her know that i sent you over say hi to her on a video um and then yeah keep an eye out for when she reaches that that milestone of one million views because she's doing this incredible incredible giveaway with this incredible prize i'm kind of gobsmacked that it's a hundred dollars i mean yeah wow okie dokie so i have the hand done ones and the stamped ones and they're all colored on the back the same way i just want to see how the fronts go so i'm thinking gloss we do the shoes and the cats oh my gosh like so and then the mat we do these two so before we do that i'm going to trim these down a little bit and then we're going to try and heat them so as i said i've not used these before i have absolutely no idea if my heat gun is even going to work to shrink these i don't know if it needs to be somewhere slightly like hotter than my um, heat gun, but we'll see. going to get my heat tile which is just a I don't actually know what it's made of it's a bit like I don't know when you whether you had them at school when we were at school in science we had Bunsen burners we had a heat proof mat we had to put underneath the Bunsen burner it feels the same as that it's the same kind of material and then I have my 
Teflon mat, which is um, it's designed for cooking for the oven, but it is heat proof, so it's brilliant. Okay, let's get my heat gun out. So I'm gonna put this. No, I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna do it. Um, I don't know where to start. Let's start with the cat on. Let's try this. I don't know if this is going to work. Um, I'm hoping that this won't be too loud on the video because I kind of want to, if it works, I want to show you that it works, but we'll see. <sighs> Wish me luck. Okay. Oh, 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 we have movement. that's cool I can't believe it's working that's awesome <laughs> it all like wrinkles up on itself and stuff is it all gonna get stuck together what the <gasps> that's so cool so does it is it gonna keep going I don't okay we're nearly there because they said once it starts to be flattened, you need to flatten it. Is that it done? Okay, so let's try and flatten it out. I mean, that's so freaking cool. Look at it. That is, that is so cool. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna do the rest. I'm gonna put it on um, speed up so that you don't have to watch all of them like that, but you'll be able to see them go, so. <laughs> I'm so excited. Right. I'm not sure why I found this so entertaining, but I really, really loved watching it. Um, yeah, I had so much fun with these. Um, the, I think it was this one, the butterfly curled so much. It did actually get stuck together um, and I had to pull it apart and then it laid itself flat. So that was absolutely fine. Um, but I had so much fun doing these. Um, I mean, if you've ever done these before, you probably aren't anywhere near as excited. <laughs> Hated as I am, but I had great time doing this. I want to do this more. This was a brilliant idea. Um, so those are the two hand-drawn ones. Now we're moving on to the stamped images. The bonus of this was the little ink that wasn't quite dry on the front of these did dry as soon as I turned the uh, the heat gun on. So um, yeah, um, there's that one flattened as well. I absolutely love these. I had so much fun doing this. There was there was a lot of squealing and giggling because I thought it was brilliant. I just love the way it curls on itself. It's so weird. Does anyone know how it works? I want to know how it works. I'm one of those people that needs to know how things work because it, it bugs me. But yeah, this one got stuck together a little bit as well. I had to pull them apart. Um, just where it curled, the two edges, I think, were warm and sort of glued themselves to themselves. But uh, yeah, overall, I'm really, really pleased with all of these and how they turned out. I am so, so happy with these. <gasps> yeah, this was so much fun. Okay, so that, that worked really, really well. Um... That was awesome. So we've got them all of a similar size and thickness. So what I'm going to do now is we're going to do matte mod podge on the butterfly and the um, treble glyph. I didn't study music very well. Um, and the gloss mod podge on the I love cats and the dance shoes. Oh, dokie. So I just put a tiny drop of the mod podge in the middle. And then I used my um, pokey tool just to spread it out as a thin layer. Um, I did try um, with a paintbrush and it just was not working. It wouldn't lie flat. I've, I've not got the best paintbrushes, to be honest. That's my fault. Nothing to do with Mod Podge. Um, the only thing I would comment on either of these was that the matte Mod Podge I couldn't smell at all. And the gloss one had a bit of a smell, but it wasn't anything 
like horrible it was just you could smell it was a glue um they both went on really nicely they both dried nice and quick and smooth and clean so i did um two layers on the front so i did a layer on the front layer on the back another layer on the front just to make sure everything was covered um just in the same way put a tiny blob on and just spread it out with my tool so that it was a nice smooth coating i just found this worked better than the paint brushes i had available um nothing to do with mod podge so yeah those are um being covered and then what i'm going to do i'm going to leave it for overnight because i wanted to really really make sure that all of the mod podge was dry and that it wasn't you know slightly tacky still before i started with the resin so next day i have got them out on my table i'm just going to pop them on this silicon um mold just to protect my work surface rather than getting one of my big mats out this is uv resin that i'm using um i keep it in that small squeezy bottle so that i have more control over it and then i'm going to use these silicon tools to just pull that resin all the way to the edges this is called doming where you just put a layer of resin over the top now because i'm doing the backs it's a very very small dome this is literally a thin smooth layer of resin just to give the back some nice shine and to protect stop anything from scratching off so i've just pulled it to the edges of each of those i'm then going to pop it in my uv lamp and cure it for three to five minutes i just want to make sure that all the edges have resin on resin will shrink ever so slightly as it cures especially uv resin so you really need to make sure that there is enough on there that it isn't going to cure and pull away from the edges because that can look really really um horrible so i'm just adding a final bit on i keep it in that kitchen roll tube to protect it from the uv rays when you buy uv resin it normally comes in like a dark or a black bottle to protect it i just put my um bottle in the the tube and that protects it perfectly i'm going to just quickly pop any bubbles with my torch and then i'm going to take them off the mold and pop them under the uv lamp once they are fully cured, we will come back and we will do the other side. So I'm going to take them out, I'm going to turn them over, and we're going to do the fronts now. Now where the back was a very small, thin, light layer, because it was the back, the front, I am doing a much bigger dome, because I wanted to actually have that domed effect and look almost like a bubble, I guess, is a good way to think of it. Um, resin is self-leveling so it will only go where you put it so as long as you are careful you can get quite a thick dome on a piece without it going over the edge because it won't break its own surface tension so it's literally only if you drag it over the edge will it go over so with this i put a thin bit on i've made sure it reaches all the edges i'm checking from lots of different angles that's why my uh, shadow keeps moving around because uh, natural light today was brilliant but it does mean that my body's leaving shadows um, so I've made sure it reaches all the edges and then I'm going to add more resin onto each one and that is just to give the dome a deeper appearance um, again I'm not going to drag it over the edges because I really don't want it to fall off um, so there we are I'm taking them off of that mold popping them down going to pop any bubbles stick them back into the UV light um, this time for sort of five to six minutes just because it's the front I'd like it really shiny and really really completely cured let's have a look at our pieces so we'll start with the matte mod podge um so we did the butterfly and the treble clef with the mat so okay ignore the fact that it's a triangle it's just a piece of paper that i have so here is our butterfly which is absolutely gorgeous So here's our butterfly, we've got a nice, here's a slightly frosted look when I hold it up to the light. And then we have our treble clef, which again gives a nice shiny finish with the resin. And we'll look at the gloss Mod Podge. So there's the I Love Cats. Um which is gorgeously see through there is a slight frosty to it but it's definitely shinier than the 
matte. Unfortunately, there is a bubble in my resin. I didn't see that. That's a shame. But there we go. And then this one, I'm saving this one to last because this is my favourite. So we've got the dance shoes. Which again are beautifully translucent. And do you remember I said that the colour wasn't lining up with the stamped image? It is now absolutely beautifully and I adore it. I love it. Oh, I'm going to have so much fun playing with these. Um, this is still my favourite, but the stamping and the fine liner pen both worked beautifully. The stamping did smudge a little because I think I put too much ink on it. Um, another thing I thought of that we could use is when I'm stamping on acetate, when I'm making something, I don't use that black ink. I use my... Name completely escapes me. I'll pop a picture in. The black ink that I use for acetate, so maybe that would have worked slightly better for this as well. But even so, there really isn't that much of a difference between the glossy and the matte Mod Podge. Um, I'll get a couple of close up pictures for you so you can see. Um, I'll try and get one on a surface and one up against some light so you can see. But overall, I think that actually worked brilliantly. So thank you to Mod Podge. A reminder the purpose of this video in part is to celebrate my wonderful friend's incredible incredible achievement on youtube um it is absolutely phenomenal that she's got that far and she totally deserves it she is fantastic if you haven't already seen her channel please go over and subscribe she is brilliant she does all sorts of things she's currently making her own paper she's got a paper making kit which is really cool um she does lots of different hops and things and she's so so creative and imaginative i love it um i mean she comes up with things that i wouldn't even have thought of that are absolutely wonderful so please 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 go and check her out um and yeah thank you very much for spending time with me today guys keep crafting and i'll see you soon bye